you know, folks, this is the reason why Maureen should not be in charge of technology. Because I just hit the wrong button. That was Connie's outro, and it was supposed to be Connie's intro. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have a Monday on a Friday. But before I get into that, let me say hello to everyone that's joining me this morning. Now, yes, this is supposed to be uh, Connie's week, but I got word just a bit ago that she's not feeling well. And so rather than disappoint all you lovely people, I just said, well, you know what, Maureen, you've done this before all by yourself. You can do it again. So we're still going to go on, but we're not going to do Connie's little topic of what other crafts are you into. I got something else in mind for you. But first, let me say hello, Leslie of the corn, my little queen. And there's Mary, Amy with Crafting Adventures. Thank you so much for being here. And there's Mary. Good morning, Sharon. How are you? And there's little Miss Candy and Sarah. I really, really do appreciate all of you being here today. So, um, yeah, I've been having a Monday on a Friday. So, uh, I've been trying to get this cardigan, uh, video done for you guys to put up next week hello Bryn and hello daniel thank y'all so much for being here i greatly appreciate your time and um so first thing i was trying to do my swatch and i knew what the swatch was supposed to do you know the gauge wise and i couldn't figure out what in the world was going on so after about an hour of trying to figure it out yeah, I picked up the wrong hook. So got that settled. Then I was rocking right along, folks, let me tell you. Now, you see this little ball of yarn here? It's not that big. It's only about 115 yards on here. It's a cotton and acrylic blend. And yeah, I was just rocking along, and all of a sudden, one of these whole little wound, I know my the sun is peeking through the blinds over there. And folks, I'm really sorry for the blind lights back there but <clears throat> one little thing you may not know about me and that is uh, I have to have lots of light not just so y'all can see my gorgeous face but this is a small room and Maureen does not like small quarters so as much of the blinds I can have open the better for me so I do apologize for that in the background but anyway this little ball of yarn Good morning, Nana Kathleen. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Uh, one whole little section here just fell right off. And I thought, well, I'll pick it up. And yeah, that's where it all went. Uh, it came, turned into the, yarn, the most awful yarn barf I have ever seen from such a tiny little ball. So I've spent all morning long trying to get that, that straight out. So that I could keep on with my tutorial and here it is 12 o'clock and yeah I still got just a little bit more of it to undo in fact um, I don't know where it's at anyway I just kind of over here to the side so anyway as I said we're gonna have a diff totally different topic this morning because Madonna has already dropped our welcome to Friday, the 14th day of July, 2023. It is Bastille Day, Collector Car Appreciation Day, which I have to uh, off a cute little uh, text to my youngest son-in-law. He is a car collector, let me tell you. It is National Tape Measure Day. Now, tape measures, as we all know, crafty people that we are, they're not just for us, us crafters. I know... Uh, if you're in the construction business, obviously, if you build furniture or cabinets, whatever, you need a tape measure. But I thought this was very appropriate for us today. It is Shark Awareness Day. And if you're like my grandson, he loves Shark Week when it comes on. He will watch it in the repeats. He will watch how, however old, you know, like last year's, years before, whatever. He just loves Shark Week. And it is Pandemonium Day, which I guess that's kind of what I'm experiencing. However, the food holiday today is mac and cheese. 
one of my most favorite comfort foods. And so when I saw that, I was like, hmm, how about we just dispense with all the yarn today and let's talk about our most favorite comfort food. What do y'all say? I mean, we always get around to talking about food anyway, don't we? So why don't we just go ahead and start out this show with talking about food? But before we do, what you drinking? What's your temperature? And I will go ahead and say it if you wish to share what you got on your hook if you're doing anything with crochet today. Now, like I said, I'm going to be finishing up barn yarf, the <laughs> barn yarf, the yarn barf on my other skein so that I can continue on working on my little cardigan, but that'll be much later this afternoon. So I'm still finishing off my last cup of coffee with some creamer in it. Uh, hazelnut, by the way, that's what I prefer to drink. And it is 91 degrees with a feel factor of 102 and extremely humid. Uh, we're supposed to have lots of rain here today. So, yeah. Oh, there you go, Daniel. Ooh, mac and cheese. Yes. Um, Sharon says she's working on some cotton pouches. That's nice. Where are they going to go to? Oh, Connie did? Oh, so I guess we're, okay, so I don't know how this goes. Why aren't we both showing up at the same time on the same channel? Okie dokie. Well, that's just kind of weird. Huh. Well, I'll be darned. Folks, if Connie is live, let's jump my channel and let's go over there to hers. What do you say? Y'all want to? Let's go do that. All right. I'll meet you over at Connie's here in just a minute. She has me playing. Well, how do I get her playing? Oh, man. How do we do that? Connie. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. Settings. Maybe that's where it's at. Can I do that there? Oh. How did she do? See, I told you not to leave me doing. I know. What in the world? It's only you on both channels. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. All righty. All righty. So that's good. That's good. That means she'll get the watch hours at two. At, oh, I know, Leslie. I had no idea what in the world was going on. But that's great because that means she'll get some watch hours too. Whew. That's awesome. Hello, Nancy. How are you, sweetheart? We was just trying to figure out if Maureen had lost her mind here for a minute because I didn't know I was playing on my channel and on Connie's too. But She's feeling a little under the weather today, so we'll catch up with her next week. But, as I said, y'all scared me there for a minute. Mercy. Sharon says that she's going to be having rain in 72. Uh, most of the pouches, oh, are going to go in your little shoe boxes. That's right. Um, as many of you know, or I hope you know, Sharon does shoe boxes, um, I guess they go out at Christmas time or to be somewhere by Christmas time. And so she works all year long and putting little little notions and goodies in the shoe boxes for those that are going to receive them. Good morning, Angela. How are you this morning? Sorry, guys. I keep saying morning. I guess my heart's still on Texas time because it would be morning there in Texas. So you're just going to have to put up with me saying um, morning. Oh, yes, and we got Nightbot working. And so if anybody would like to type the word drop, let's see if your uh, channel pops up. Oh, Mary's drinking sweet tea. She's a very Southern lady because, uh, you know, all of us in the South, we love our sweet tea. Okay, there goes Daniel. Come on, Nightbot, do your thing, please, please, please. Sharon did drop. Come on, Night Bob. Night Bob. Ugh. Why isn't it working? Daniel, tell me why it's not working. Oh, 
there it is. Except that, oh, wait a minute. That's the one I have programmed in. Oh, man. Well, at least I got part of not bot working right. I have to go back and figure out why drop's not working. I must have forgot to click something that says when they type the word drop, it'll drop their link. Well, we'll get that figured out later on. But anyway, let's talk about food. So my most favorite comfort food is da -da -da -da, mac and cheese. Good morning, Wicked Granny. We are talking about our most favorite comfort food today. Uh, I know that, that the topic was supposed to be how crafty are you or what other crafts you like to, to enjoy, but that's for Connie. And so she's not here with us today. So you're just going to have to put up with me. But anyway, so I decided that since today's um, the day that we do. Uh, yes, yes, you will. Uh, anyway, I just decided that we do something totally different because, I mean, we always end up on food, don't we? Uh, Nancy says her comfort food is ice cream. What kind, Nancy? Uh, comfort food for candy is chocolate. Yeah, I just almost wonder who doesn't have chocolate at the top of their maybe top fives anyway. Hello, Maritza. How are you, you sweetheart? I appreciate all of you coming in and sharing your time with me today, even though it is a Friday. Getting ready for the weekend, I hope. Uh, let's see. I said mac and cheese. Mac and cheese really is my number one. Potato soup, good potato soup you know with chunks in it and um ham or big uh chunks of bacon uh the thick slice cut bacon um let's see what else do i put in there oh i love to put in big chunks of uh carrots and um now if i'm making it just for me i will put in broccoli my husband doesn't like the broccoli he will take the carrots um Let's see. Oh, Paul Pla says, uh, Daniel, excuse me, says his is ramen. Oh, my word. Uh, good morning, Mara. How are you? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. She's leaving me a thumbprint. Uh, Maritza says she likes mint chocolate chip ice cream. Nancy, you impact more boxes today. Yay. Getting ready for my live tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. That is all. Awesome, Nancy. Y'all be sure to mark it on your calendar, 8 p.m. this evening. Excuse me, 8 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be going, going over to Nancy's house. That's awesome. Bluebell Dutch chocolate ice cream. You know, speaking of blue Bluebell, um, my husband doesn't normally eat a lot of sweets. But come Christmas time, Bluebell puts out the most luscious, creamy, coconut ice cream folks you have ever put in your mouth but you only can get it at christmas time why they don't do it all year long i don't know but oh my word it is great uh mara says yes yay little treasures by nancy tonight that's right mary loves grilled cheese now mary is it any kind of cheese that you put in it or do you like to also put like a little turkey or ham and bacon with it or maybe some veggies with your uh grilled cheese Oh, there you go. Sarah says when she makes mac and cheese, she puts tuna and peas in it. Well, then that kind of turns into a tuna casserole, doesn't it, Sarah? Uh, oh, good. She does a weekly challenge every Friday. Today is going to be crochet and knit. Right up our alley, folks. Crab and clarified butter. Oh, Chris, that sounds awesome. And thank you so much for being here. What a great topic to come in on, huh? Uh, you don't think coconut at Christmas? Oh, I do. Mercy. Uh, let's see. No, just the old American sliced cheese and bread. Okie dokie. Let's see. Sarah and Granny are talking about... Hmm. I put tuna. Oh, yes, it is, isn't it? Yes. 
Let's see. So I've said mac and cheese, potato soup. Now, y'all may not think that this is a comfort food, but it is for me. Uh, every Sunday, folks, my mom, we had roast potatoes, carrots, celery, gravy, big old rolls. All right. And so the next night on Monday nights, we all had, uh, well, you know, the leftovers. And mom would take the rest of the roast beef that was left and she'd shred it up a little bit and she'd leave it over in one pot. And of course, if there was any gravy left over, you know, we did that. So we always had, well, a couple of us anyway, would always have our rolls out there and we'd put some of that um, chopped up roast that was left over and then cover it with gravy and put some sliced fresh sliced onions on top that is my other comfort food i really really love that and you know there's just some dishes that our mamas and our grandmas make that we try to replicate and i don't know what my mama did with her roast but i have never been able to replicate that one extra ingredient that she always smeared on the roast while it was cooking overnight before we'd go to church yeah yeah that and my grandma's um dressing at christmas time yeah that was one little thing that she always left up now she always told it that us told us that her secret ingredient was love and that you had to mix things with love while you were cooking it. Yeah, I kind of think, just like my mom, she and her both had that secret little spice or something that just didn't get passed down. Uh, Sharon says that her favorite comfort food is pizza. Oh, no, that's not boring at all. Mara says, I really am boring with my comfort food. Chicken noodle soup sounds good to me. Yeah, there you go, Chris. There you go. You and my grandma, I swanee. Love is that secret ingredient. Um, no, chicken noodle soup, not at all. Um, I love to make my own chicken noodle soup because um, I like to use the egg noodles for my noodles. Now, in a pinch, I'm more than happy to have have good old Campbell's chicken noodle soup. You know, it doesn't bother me at all. But if I'm going to have really good chicken noodle soup, I want my my egg noodles. Try kitchen bouquet. That was my mother's secret ingredient in a couple of her best meals. Well, you know what? I hadn't thought about that. Kitchen bouquet. Now, is that a spice blend? Is it um, like a broth of some kind? Because I'm not familiar with that name, Wicked. But that does sound good. Kitchen bouquet. If it's spices, I bet it's just a wonderful blend of a whole bunch of ones. Okay, well, we'll wait for her here in just a minute. So I've told you mine is uh, mac and cheese, potato soup the roast beef sandwich um i have in the last i'm gonna say maybe 10 years or so my youngest daughter uh got on the kick of eating lentils don't ask me why she just did and i had never had them before in my life i am not kidding you but she was home for a visit and she gets out I mean, she's got all these veggies over here, chopped up celery and onion and carrots, and then she's sauteing them in the pan, and then she's dumping that in the crock pot. And then she's got this little bag like this of lentils, which you wouldn't, you know, as little as them little things are, uh, you wouldn't think they'd make a whole lot, but they did because they swell up a little bit, you know. She dumped that in there, and then she took some chicken broth, dumped that in there, and then in a little bit, after it had been cooking for an hour or so, she opened up a can of Rotel, uh, you know, chili and tomatoes and dumped that out. And I was like, oh, this, this really didn't look like it was going very well at all. And then here in just a little while, she's over there and she's frying up a few slabs of, not slab, but, you know, a few pieces of bacon and chopped it up, got out some chives, 
chop those up, you know, getting this all ready and have to have cornbread. So she made some cornbread, stuck that over there in the oven. And when it was time to eat, she showed us how we were supposed to eat this lentil soup. You, you know, obviously put the soup in the bowl and then you top it off with the uh, chives and the onions and then butter up your cornbread and get after it. Oh my word. So I have to say that my, one of my top fives is lentil soup, but it's gotta be hers. So I don't get it that often, but it was really, really good. Let me tell you, Wicked said, no, it's a little bottle of liquid, liquid, not even sure if they still make it. Well, you know, I have come to, to realize Wicked that, um, if it's been made, ever been made, whatever, check Amazon first. So I will, I'm going to do that. In fact, I'm going to write it down right now so I don't forget it. Because if they still make it, you know, I'd love to, to try it and see if that might be another little ingredient out there besides love that makes some of these recipes that my mom and grandma had that, <clears throat> oh, she said I checked and they still make it awesome that's awesome can i get it on amazon is that where you check but that's good yay so what are some other uh comfort foods do you guys like i don't know if y'all heard that but that was a deep rumble out there we are supposed to get rain, thunderstorms this afternoon. Oh, dear. Well, Tia didn't hear it, at least, anyway, so that's a good thing. Does anybody have anything that's, you know, like a little different? I mean, we've all mentioned pizza, soups, um ice cream obviously and chocolate too that sounds good as comfort foods you just googled it but i'm sure amazon would have it too okay well that's great you too mara thank you so much for popping in i greatly appreciate your time and your thumbprint that was awful sweet of you <coughs> excuse me i'm sorry if i sound a little uh rough in the the voice folks but after I took Tia out this morning for her little morning constitution, I've done nothing but sneeze all morning long. And so, of course, that creates that junk in your throat. And <clears throat> so I'm going to be clearing a lot. Sarah loves peanut butter. I do, too. Crunchy or creamy? I'm a crunchy girl. In fact, extra crunchy is like what I like. And Peter Pan, Jif, Walmart store brand name hello joy how are you thank you so much for being here i really do appreciate your time it's awful sweet of you and right now while i'm thinking about it if you are lurking thank you so much for being here just all i ask is that you be sure and leave us a a thumbprint because you know it helps not only my channel but connie's too if you're watching on her channel and um <coughs> excuse me if you're watching the replay later on again thank you so much for your time as well oh gotta be creamy you know uh here in the last month or so several of us have been talking about peanut butter and i'm really surprised how many folks prefer the creamy over the crunchy i mean i don't know now i did grow up with creamy don't get me wrong um uh, You had chocolate cocoa wheats for breakfast. Cocoa wheats. Are you talking about uh, like the shredded wheat? Or are you talking about uh, like Special K that has the chocolate flavored wheat flakes in it? Hmm. But anyway, like I was saying, I grew up with creamy peanut butter, so it wasn't until... I don't know, I guess I'd been married for a few years, 
or maybe about the time oh it's a hot cereal um like what uh multo meal i don't know now see multo meal cream wheat grits like cream of wheat only with chocolate yeah there you go Mm-hmm. that was my oldest daughter's favorite breakfast from the time she could sit up in a high chair let me tell you no i don't like cream of wheat um grits or um the malto meal all those that have that really um creamy grainy type texture uh, and that's exactly what it is it reminds me of eating wet sand and i'm sorry and i hope that doesn't turn anybody off from it but yes i just well oh frieza b thank you so much for being here i appreciate your time i'm sorry connie is not here with us today but she's not feeling very well but i do hope that those of you that are uh, over on her channel you don't mind me being here just to chit chatting with you oatmeal for you that's what i was going to say that's my other comfort food is oatmeal and i i'll eat instant i mean i will don't get me wrong but i really do prefer the steel cuts steel cut oats you know you gotta cook them nice and slow over the stove because that's what i grew up with and that's what i i uh prefer to have chris likes kimchi vietnamese egg rolls uh something else they're a filipino egg roll a filet mignon, Mediterranean lamb, Krispy Kreme, hot glaze. My list is endless. Oh, uh-huh. You're like my husband. He says, if it's food and it doesn't bite me back, I like it. To him, it's all comfort food. <laughs> Jennifer, sweetheart, how are you? Good to see you. You make overnight meat me meatloaf most of the uh, Meatloaf. There, there you go. There's another thing I could just gorge myself on is uh, oat, is meatloaf. But you make the overnight oatmeal most of the time. Hello, Mimi Cat Do. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate that. Uh, we are talking about, those of you just coming in, we're talking about what is our favorite comfort food. Because um we had a different topic because this is supposed to be connie's weekend but she uh is not feeling real well today so i'm leaving that for for next week but we always tend to end up on food so i figured why not just start out on food see what our comfort foods are so that's what we're talking about oh mimi did you just have a birthday happy belated birthday to you you I hope it was sometime this week and you're still celebrating. So how are you ladies that are just now coming in doing? I hope your week has been great. And I hope you have some great plans for the weekend. Oh, that's awesome. And speaking of the weekend, um, I hope it's going to be dry enough for those of you up north and even in the uh central united states anybody up along the east coast that it has been experiencing lots and lots of rain over the last few days i hope it's going to dry up well enough for you to be able to get out and uh, do something outside other than clean up from a very very wet week we're supposed to get rain here in Florida all weekend. So you know what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be sitting inside crocheting and hopefully hubby's going to get caught up on some reports that he needs to get done. Otherwise he'd be out on the golf course. <laughs> oh, Frisby says that her stepson just got home from Vermont. Was he up there helping out with the storms and the floodwaters? Mimi's birthday was yesterday. Well, girlfriend, you better celebrate 
all weekend long, sweetie. Oh, you're way behind on videos? I am too, sweetheart. Not only watching them, but making them. Because that's what I was doing this morning, trying to get this little uh, cardigan out. Um, I'm making the cardigan for one of my granddaughters and I wanted to share the pattern with everyone but I had a really really bad yarn barf on one of these little rolls and so I spent a good portion of the morning trying to get that straightened out oh Mimi it's raining here in Massachusetts again oh Frisby says his girlfriend works in Vermont, so getting home was a challenge. Oh, I bet not only for him coming back home, but for her as well. Mm. My heart really goes out to those folks up there, especially since most of them have never seen a flood like this their whole life. So, mm. We really do need to keep all of them in our prayers because not only during all this flooding that's been going on. Oh, many, many wa roads washed away, Mimi Cat do said, because her son works up in Vermont. Yes, it's just really awful, awful, awful. Like I said, they were talking about this is, you know, that what once in a thousand years flood situation and so mm. oh jennifer says it's raining here too and we're waiting for two yellow warnings for the wind oh my goodness yes yes everybody definitely praying for everyone because not only have they had to live through this flooding situation but you know what water does it damages so much and so it's going to be an awful awful cleanup Mm. I'm not saying that we down along the coastal areas are used to floodings and massive floodings like that, but, you know, because really it's not something you can get used to. Uh, but to not experience anything like these poor folks have experienced here in the last couple of weeks, this, it's de devastating. But we definitely need to keep them in our prayers. We really do. And keep those in our prayers that are going up to help. You know, there's going to be lots of cleanup, lots of crews that always show up from all over the United States to help in situations like that. So need to be in prayer for them as well as they travel there, as they help folks do their cleanup, get power back restored. Um, definitely working on these roads and things so people can get to where they need to. Yeah. Yeah. We need to keep everyone involved in this in our prayers. We really do. So one of the things that we should be celebrating today is sharks. So how many of you love to watch Shark Week? As I said, my uh, youngest grandson, Warren, many of you have met him. And of course, I talk about him all the time. He has loved sharks from the time he could sit in front of a TV. I am not kidding you. Um, and we took him to the aquarium in Corpus Christi one time, and we just about could not get him away from um, um, the big tanks there, you know, because they have the big glass wall and you get to see the fish swimming. And, um, of course, Seeing them on TV is totally different than being right there up at the glass and seeing them. And he had no idea how big some of them could um, could get. Nope. National Shark Day. Yes, it's National Shark Day, but it's also uh, Shark Week. So I'm sure if I were home, I would find him glued in front of the TV because, uh, you know, uh, guess the Discovery Channel is where it's at. I don't or pay attention but <clears throat> excuse me he likes not only watching the new season but he will watch all the others that they do in reruns getting you prepared for the episode of that night so you used to keep aquarium sharks you mean sharks in your aquarium 
Sharknado. Sharknado. You can keep sharks in an aquarium? Are you talking about little bitty sharks? Why would you want a shark? A shark to do. Hmm. I guess that's just like um, one of my professors when I was going to college. He had, a, yeah, little sharks. Okay. Hmm. Is it because they really are little or do they stay little because of the size of the tank? And I only ask it that way because, oh, not the big aggressive ones. Okay. The only reason why I asked is because, like I said, I had a professor in college. Uh, he was a biology professor and he kept in um, a big um Bigger, it fit on one big uh, lab table, and he had him in this big glass container. And he had, we all called it baby uh, crocodile, but he said that so long as it stayed within that confined space, it would not get any bigger. But if he was to take it out and put it in a bigger space, then it would grow to the size of the space. Now, the first time I walked into his classroom, Let's see, shark, Nadu tornado with sharks. Oh, okay, they do stay little. Shark, Nadu movies. Goo goo. Ah, oh, all right. It's B A L A shark. All right, sharks creep me out, especially when their eyes roll back. Oh, I know. Oh my goodness. I agree with you there, DK Jen. I really do. Um, Anyway, so it was very um, unnerving when we first walked into his class and you see this crocodile in this glass, you know, confined space over there. Um, and did you know that he only fed it once a week, like a mouse here or um, some other type of rodent? We never wanted to know what it was. Um, yeah, so... And thank goodness all it did was just sit there in its little glass container and not do anything. Now, he would at times get it out and let it move around on the floor so it could have some exercise. But he always had his door locked and a sign <laughs> on the door that always said, do not enter, croc on the floor. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Oh, my word was a great deterrent to uh, unscheduled, um, you know, conferences with your professor. Oh, yeah. We always told him that he used to uh, put that out on his door when he didn't want to mess with students. He never admitted it, but we kind of believe that's what he did. Uh, Joy said, I used to have the ball of sharks. I love them. They are not a real shark. They just resemble them because of the dorsal fin. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Looky there. I always try to learn something new at least once a day. And there it is. I just learned that we have a shark that's not really a shark. And it's little. That is cool. So I started to ask just a little bit ago, um, what are your plans for the weekend? You know, one of y'all might have something going on that might sound a little more appealing to me than sitting in the room all weekend. <clears throat> Excuse me, which wouldn't be a bad thing because I could get some crocheting done and get caught up on my videos. Isn't it awful that there's just not enough time in the day to watch everyone that you want to watch? Just have to pick and choose today who I'll get to get caught up on and tomorrow and tomorrow. And the next thing you know, oh, look, there's another channel. I want to check them out. I can work for you, Candy. Um, yeah. No, you know what? In my old age, um, I have learned that I'm not as much a people person as I used to be. Yeah, I'm afraid I'd get you fired 
Nancy says, depending on the weather, we will be finishing painting the outside of your house. Oh, that's, uh, I remember when we painted the outside of our house. All I can say is I was really glad at the time. Um, we had some, some boys that were having to um, get some um, volunteer hours in, you know, for their uh, schooling. So, yes. Hello, Nisi. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. I'm glad that you got home and had a wonderful time in Texas. You're having a late breakfast before you head out to the garden. I hope all of y'all got to see that she finally got some um, veggies from her garden the other day. <coughs> and that garden really is looking very nice. You put in such a lot of hard work into that. Oh, anyway, I was talking about the outside paint, painting our house. Yes. I hope you have somebody that's doing that for you, Nancy. Or maybe um, you enjoy doing that kind of thing. I'm not much of a... Um, what kind of labor do I want to call that? Manual labor person? Yeah. In fact, my husband and I have an agreement. He takes care of the outside. I take care of the inside. So if our house needed painting right now, he'd be doing it or finding someone to get it done. <laughs> hmm. You don't mind the painting? Oh, well, that's good. Oh, well, I understand that one, Nancy. Uh, you know, we've not been able to have a garden the last, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, the full fledged out there in the ground garden the last three or four years because it's just been so horribly dry out in West Texas. Uh, so we've been learning how to do a lot of uh, uh, container gardening. Yes. And I mean container in the fact that we can put them in a five gallon bucket, have them out on the porch and then roll them into um, the house or into one of our um, sheds that we hack that uh, we can keep in from out of the direct sunlight uh, so that the heat just doesn't get to them. You don't mind painting, especially the edging. Well, you know, I don't mind doing window seals and that kind of thing or the door frames um, around the house, but to actually get out there and start painting the house, no, that's, that's not my thing. Don't care for that. <clears throat> So what else is about to start producing in your garden, Nisi? Yes, it is, Nisi, most definitely. Even if you have a raised garden, you know, that's still a lot of work. That really, really is. Because we did try that one year. Um, yeah, it didn't turn out too well for us. So that's before we decided to go from the big massive garden to the container gardening. You know, we were trying to, to do something to have um, at least tomatoes and cucumbers, uh, peppers, because I do like to put a lot of that up. <clears throat> Folks, I am so sorry. Oh, she's got some bell peppers, some little broccoli heads. Your kale is ready to harvest. I have more romaine lettuce to harvest. And you have tomatoes now. Oh, that's awesome. There is nothing better than tomatoes out of your own garden. Uh, carrots are not ready, and I'm seeing my squash and green, and you're not seeing any of your squash or green beans yet? I see things like green beans and black-eyed peas. That would that would have been way over by the 1st of June for us out in West Texas. Now, the 
Oprah right now would be going like crazy. Let me tell you. Really, really would. So let's see. We've talked about food and food and we've talked about sharks. We've talked about gardens now. Somebody else pop up with a, with a topic. Come on. Who's going to be the first one? Pop up with one. I just knew for certain we'd talk about food for much longer than we did, folks. Oh, I know. I know. Since it is summertime, it's all about grilling outside, isn't it? So, what is your favorite thing to cook outside? Now, I don't cook this. My husband and my son-in-law does. But I love to take uh, pork loins, whole pork loins, get them seasoned up real good, wrap them up in foil, and then stick them out there on the uh, smoker and let them smoke all night long. Now, I know that's not grilling, but it's about as close as I would come to it. You love grilled pineapple. Joy likes steak. Oh, Nisi says she hasn't been able to crochet all week. She's been busy with little man. Yeah, you're getting him ready for school, aren't you? Burgers and grilled veggies. Now, you know what? In the summertime, I could live off of just grilled veggies. I'm not kidding you. Corn on the cob. That sounds good. Now, I'm not much for pineapple. I, I don't, I just have, I just don't like it. I just don't like pineapple in any form. Good morning, Taffy. Excuse me. Good afternoon, Taffy. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. But yes, the traditional burgers. Um, let's see. If camping, hobo pies. Oh, oh. Joy, tell me about hobo pies. I I think I remember them, but I'm not real certain. Oh, he doesn't have summer school on Friday, so maybe today I'll get to crochet after I do what I need to do outside. Well, that'll be good. Yeah. Now, hobo pies, don't you make them in foil? Is that right? Man, I haven't heard hobo pies in a long, long, long time. They are cooked in foil, aren't they? Cast iron squares. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm thinking of something else then. You have a, a cast, cast iron squares. Huh. I have some cast iron uh, pans, but mine are round. Hello, Carrie. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, okay, I got to know about this cast iron square. Is it like a waffle iron, except that it's square? Huh. I'll have to check that out. Cast iron squares. I learned that there's two. Learned two things today. Well, what I was thinking ho, ho, hobo pies were is that you use foil and you put in the foil, you know, uh, maybe your uh, bread or biscuit that's rolled out flat or, you know, pulled out flat, however you want it. And then you put just whatever you want, shredded potatoes, maybe you know, eggs that have been beaten up or veggies or lunch meat with cheese and that kind of thing. And then you just close it up and you stick it out there on the, the coals for a little bit to get it cooked. Is that even close? Mary, Girl Scout recipe. Yeah, maybe that's where I'm thinking about it. 
Okay, Joy says, you butter them, put them in bread filling with whatever you want, close it and sit it in the fire until toasted. That's right. Okay. Yep, there you go. I don't know, Taffy. Usually the chat is either off to the side of who you're watching or down underneath sometimes. <clears throat> yes, there you go, Mary. Yeah, that's what I thought. Only went on one camping trip with one of my girls when they were um, in Girl Scouts. And yeah, I decided I, I would be more than happy to cart them there and pick them up and bring them home. I'd be happy to send them with any kind of supplies they needed, but I was not <laughs> going to spend a week with um, little girls like that again. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, goodness. That's why I always say there is a special place in heaven for folks that we're, work with children under uh junior high age let's put it that away yep even at a young age my my patience wasn't all that great for more than you know of course i raised my own girls and i i did try most of the time to have patience with them because i remembered being a little girl once upon a time too um but to get like five six eight twelve of them in a group at one time no no couldn't handle it <laughs> oh, Joy says we usually fill them with pizza stuff. Okay. Well, that sounds cool. Oh, Joy says the squares are on long metal poles, two of them put together. Well, I'll be darned. I'm going to have to Google that. That might be neat to have in my camper. We always, I'm always looking for any kind of utensil, you know, that you can uh, stick in the camper and cook outside over a campfire or a grill as much as possible. Because I don't like heating up the camper during the summer, just like I don't like heating up the house during the summer. And I'm sure many of you can relate to that. Well, any other goodies? Oh, speaking of camping, um, now I know everybody likes to do uh, s'mores, you know, the marshmallow and chocolate and graham crackers and that kind of thing. Um, we tried, now notice I said tried one time to do fried ice, <laughs> fried ice cream <laughs> outside over the campfire. Uh, let's see, Joy. Made sure, make sure to get the cast iron. They are making them of tin now, and they can melt. Oh, alrighty. No, I'm sure I would want to go with the cast iron. But thank you for that. I really do appreciate that tip. So my mom had gone camping with us one time, and she was always about trying out new recipes. And she found campfire fried ice cream, I think is what it was titled. I can't remember. Anyway, so I made sure to have all the ingredients. And if I remember correctly, we were supposed to have uh, coconut and graham cracker and, of course, the ice cream. But you had to buy and take it and use it, like, right then. Because um, back in my day of camping, you either had a cooler for your camp box or if you were really, really lucky, you had just a very small uh, refrigerator that would run off. I mean, or yeah, a refrigerator that would run off your generator. So anyway, we'd gone to town. We got our ice cream. We got back. And I mean, we were putting this stuff all together. So what you're supposed to do is you were supposed to take the ice cream, let it soften just a little bit, put it in a bowl, and then mix in whatever nuts you liked and uh, the graham cracker and the coconut and put enough of it in there to where it would uh, form a little ball and then you roll it in the um, coconut and the graham cracker again to make a ball. And then you put it in a uh, foil and wrapped it up so that really what it was going to do was to heat it enough to set the coating on the outside 
of your ice cream. I cannot tell you how many of those little ice cream balls that we tried to make and set out there to cook over the campfire. We always ended up with soup. Now, not that the girls minded it all because they thought it was pretty cool, you know, but I, that's one of those times I turned and looked at my mom and said, um, I think this is what we can chalk up to utter failure. That are, again, somebody left out a special ingredient that was supposed to help you keep that all together. I don't know. But anyway, if anyone has a special recipe for, do, for doing campfire uh, fried ice cream, let me know. Because I would like to try it, but not mama's recipe, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, I know that we still got just a few minutes to go, but you know what? Um, I've about run out of topics to talk about as far as food's concerned. Isn't that weird? So I am going to let you go just a little bit early so that if there's someone else that you wish to go look at at one o'clock, and I do apologize, I did not look to see who might be coming on next on Fridays at one o'clock. Um, we're still, you know, figuring out this new time change here and everything of when we wanted to go live. I will start doing a better job of not going. See, Nisi says she needs to get outside because I'm sure that even where you're at, Nisi, it can tend to get hot pretty quick. So I do appreciate all of you being here today. I'm sorry you had to put up with me all by myself, but that's just what happens sometimes. Uh, so we will be at Connie's house next week and we will be on her topic of how crafty are you? So be thinking about that, you know, and be willing to share with us some other crafts that you enjoy just as much as crocheting, knitting, or whatever else it is you like to do with yarn. So until next time, please remember to be the light out there in the darkness for someone today because you never know, could be your light that they are needing to see. And as Connie would say, be kind. Kindness goes a long ways and it can change the world. Because if nothing else, you being kind can change you. We love you all and I thank you so much for being here. Have a great weekend. Bye.